Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. Today I want to talk about that wonderful pagan festival, part of the Wheel of the Year Sabbaths that we know as Lunasa or Lammas. With this video, what I'd like to do is to give you sort of a general overview of Lammas and its tradition. And then I'm going to give you five ways for you to celebrate Lammas so that you can incorporate this wonderful festival into your everyday witchcraft. So with that said, what is Lammas? Well, there's two names for it. There's Lammas and Lunasa. Lammas is the Christianised version of this festival and just means loaf mass. Lunasa is the pagan traditional name for it in honour of the god Lu, who was a god of fertility. This is an ancient pagan festival and it was formalised by the great Gerald Gardner into the Wiccan Wheel of the Year on the 1st of August, which is the midpoint between the summer solstice and the autumn equinox. However, this was a deeply symbolic festival. What it celebrated was the start and the end of the grain harvest. So the festival itself would probably last two weeks or so, depending on the amount of grain that had to be bought in. This means that traditionally, it started when the first sheaf of wheat was cut. And this was always done on the day of the full moon in August. This is in order that the August full moon lit the evening up so that you could try and get that harvest in as soon as possible. It finished, of course, with the cutting of the last sheath of corn. And this last sheath of corn was known as the neck. Now, it is with this last sheaf of corn that John Barleycorn, who is the god of the corn, or Liu, or as he is sometimes known, the green man, is killed. His blood is spilt into the earth to ensure that the crop will come up again next year. And because of this bloodletting that we have in this particular time of year, this is the time when the Druids and various other people would, would do human sacrifice. So don't get lost when wandering around farmers' fields at this time of year because you're likely to be captured and slain. I actually wouldn't put that past some of my neighbours, to be fair. You know, they're quite old ways. They really are. This is an important day for the Celtic calendar because it was a quarter day, meaning this is the start of one of the four seasons and the season that we're starting is autumn. Weird, I know, it seems we're going into high summer and we're just starting the season of autumn. But this is because our ancient ancestors felt that summer was a period of growth and increase and autumn was the period of maturation and fruit ripening. So this is when the harvest starts, hence why the first day of autumn is the first day that you cut your first grain. Nowadays, of course, this has been formalised onto the 1st of August, which by lucky hap, this year, the full moon for August falls on the 1st. So it's a particularly auspicious day for everyone to have a harvest of sorts. The symbolism for this festival is rife. The first sheath of corn to be cut considers that the blood is begin to be spilt for John Barleycorn or the god Liu, depending on you know your preference. This first sheath was then immediately taken to the mill, ground into flour and then baked into bread when this bread was ceremoniously shared amongst the community that day. And this was the start. And so the festival went on with the workers hard at it in the fields until the last sheaf was left to stand. Then there was a bit of a, a sort of competition, wasn't there, of jostling. I mean, you know, I'm going to cut the last sheaf. No, I'm going to cut it. And it was a great honour. And the workers would throw their sickles at the last standing sheaf of corn to try and cut its neck because this symbolised the death of John Barleycorn or the god Liu. With his death, we are grateful and thankful because it means that the blood that he spills into the earth will ensure that the crop will rise again. The last sheaf of corn, once it was cut, was not baked into bread. It was ceremoniously gathered up and often created into corn dollies. These corn dollies will be bought inside and kept very safe throughout the winter so that when spring came, they could be taken out and ploughed back into the earth to ensure next year's crop as it was considered that this last sheaf of corn in its corn dolly form held the spirit of John Barleycorn.
so it was really very well looked after over winter. However, this custom will change in varying parts of the UK, depending on where you were. When I grew up, you would find corn dollies at the field entrances. To every single field of grain, there would be a corn dolly set there. And this was an appeasement to the land spirits, the fairies and an offering to ensure that the corn came back. So it certainly wasn't taken into the house and looked after. It was also, I mean, it was terribly pagan where I grew up, so it was also very well known that you could pick up the corn dollies, you could admire their beauty, and they were very intricate. Some of them were magnificent, much better than the things that I am showing you how to make. These would then have to be carefully replaced back. And I remember the first time I bought a corn dolly in, showed it to um, uh, you know one of the ladies of the village. And I said, oh, look, I found, I found a corn dolly. And she was absolutely furious. Go and put it back, young girl. You can't take those. I never took them again, I have to say, but they were very beautiful. The festival itself has lots of traditions that go with it. Mostly it was considered it would be over by the 11th of August or thereabouts. And so it's at this point that you could hold a hand fasting ceremony. That is if you wanted to continue the trial run that you'd started at the very beginning of the Lunasa Festival. So on the 1st of August, you might go off and live with your preferred mate for this period of 11 days. And then at the end of it, you could then decide to stay together or to leave. And if you decided to stay together, obviously you would have a hand fasting ceremony. And in fact, this is where hand fasting, the word comes from, because if they decided that they did like each other, they were bound hand in fist. The hand is held fast by another. Or they could leave each other and try their chances with somebody else. So that is my general overview. Lammas is a festival of the first harvest of grain and in honour of the world's bounty and fertility in the coming year. So here are five ways that you can celebrate this festival in your practice. And the first one is the most obvious. You simply bake some bread. Now baking bread is a way of honouring just this time of year. You can bake it to leave on your altar, you can bake it to eat with your friends. It doesn't really matter but here I'd like to show you my version of baking bread because I'm rubbish at making bread. So let me show you a very quick herby soda bread that you could put on your altar and is delicious. For this recipe you will need 250 grams of plain flour, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of bicarb of soda, 25 grams of butter, 50 grams of oats, and then a teaspoon of herbs. And I've got marjoram and sage, although I would have preferred thyme, but I'd run out. And lastly, half a pint of buttermilk. The recipe couldn't be easier. Simply mix all the ingredients together, making sure you melt the butter first, which I didn't and had to take it out and melt it. Simply combine all the ingredients very well together and when this is done, pour it out onto a baking tray lined with paper and place in a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes or so. When it is beautiful, risen and golden brown, it is ready to remove, whereupon you can place it on your altar or eat it with sausages like we did for lunch. The second thing that you should do is to leave offerings for the fae, possibly with that herby soda bread, which is perfect for them. This is a covenant between the human world and the world of the fae, and you know, you don't want to displease them because they might well cause mischief. It is very old fashioned. Tradition states that if you don't leave an offering at this time of year, your corn will not ripen and your cattle will no longer produce any milk. You do this on Lammas Eve, which is the night before the 1st of August. That'll be the 31st of July. The Lammas Eve is when the fair folk come out into the fields and play on their fiddles throughout the night until dawn. Those that work the land have always known that the others, as the fae are called, are always at work with them, helping with the ripening of the wheat or the setting of the fruit. It doesn't matter, you know, what particular branch of agriculture you have, this is where the fae help out the most. And therefore it's important to acknowledge them at this time. So, number two is set out an offering for the fair folk. Number three, make a corn dolly. 
This will house the spirit of John Barleycorn and you can hang it in your home over winter to then take it out in the spring and ensure that your garden grows bountiful. I have made some corn dollies from this year's wheat. I left one in the field as an offering for the Fae and the others are going to decorate my Lammas table and altar. It is a fun craft to do and if you look back through my previous videos you will find out how to make them. They are a little fiddly but I do think they're worth it. Number four is to make a crop circle. Now this is a slightly contentious one this one isn't it because people think crop circles are aliens coming down and they might well be but we've been making crop circles for Ever. and it is part of our heritage. You would make a circle in order to perform the rituals required to venerate the god Liu or John Barleycorn or to make your sacrifice. I do love a crop circle. They do send a little shiver up my spine. the Lammas Festival, finally, number five, is to climb the highest hill around you. In Ireland, they used to climb the hills and honour the uh, pagan gods at the top of them. And then when Christianity came over, Patrick was then considered the patron saint of Ireland and Croach Patrick was climbed in order to venerate him. But previous to this, that peak had been climbed for varying pagan gods. It's a rather lovely thing. It's so that you can walk up to the top of the hill and see how far the good weather is going to last you. And it's considered extremely lucky. From there, you can also do a couple of money spells because this is a time of abundance. Although, no, I think money spells are best in the spring, actually. Yeah, so don't do money spells. Well, you can, but they're best done in the spring. And so that is the five things that you should do to celebrate Lammas. Bake bread, leave offerings for the Fae, make corn dollies, have a crop circle and climb to the highest mountain. Even if you just do one of those, I think that would be pretty cool. Let me know in the comments if you're going to do any or all of them. And otherwise, don't forget to go and check out my coven, which we've just done, which is the healing circles, which was absolutely magical. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill for all the details that are there. And in the meantime, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel and enables me to carry on making videos for you. And I will see you all next week.